Everybody got quiet, so I guess we can begin. That's my cue. Good afternoon. As dean of the University of Alabama Law School, I am so very pleased today to welcome all of you to the inaugural celebration and presentation of the Harper Lee Prize for Legal Fiction. Nell Harper Lee of Monroeville, Alabama, attended our law school in the 1940s and published To Kill a Mockingbird in 1960. The book illuminated the responsibility of lawyers to fight injustice and empowered them to represent the wrongly accused. Since its publication, To Kill a Mockingbird has influenced generations of college graduates aspiring to practice law like Atticus Finch to go to law school. Last year, on the occasion of the book's 50th anniversary, we contacted Harper Lee, who graciously authorized this award to honor an author whose work best exemplifies the positive role of lawyers in society and their power to effect change. The prize is grounded in the character of lawyer Atticus Finch and his principled and courageous representation of Tom Robinson. On September 21, 2010, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder honored our law school when he came to Tuscaloosa, Alabama to help celebrate half a century of To Kill a Mockingbird and to help us to establish this award. Our law school has a very special partner in this award in sponsoring it, the ABA Journal, which is read by about half of the nation's lawyers monthly, about half a million lawyers. Let me now call upon Jack Rives to make some remarks. Jack is the executive director of the ABA. Thank you, Dean. It'll surprise you, I know, but occasionally the American Bar Association does things that are controversial. When we were asked by the University of Alabama to partner with them in this award, we were able to do something that's totally uncontroversial. Uh, honoring Harper Lee is a great idea. Uh, choosing uh, the writer who highlights the role of lawyers in society is a great idea. And so we were able to define a role for this with the University of Alabama School of Law. We were honored to do so. And it's especially fitting that the first winner be John Grisham, who could have won the award a number of years ago had the award existed at the time. He's a very deserving winner. We're delighted to present it to him. We know there are going to be many future winners who are going to be quite deserving as well. We hope some people are inspired to write the good stories about lawyers from this. But um, the particular book he wrote, The Confession, I'm, I know many of you have read it, is especially timely. It was a remarkably good job. It does tell a very good lawyer story. The American Bar Association is the world's largest voluntary professional organization, and this is one of those good things to do that we were delighted to partner with. So, Dean, thank you and the University of Alabama Law School for the opportunity. Thank you, Jack. As you probably know, our ceremony is occurring uh, this week at the same time as a national book festival here in D.C., which is sponsored by the Library of Congress. So we're now going to ask uh, Roberta Schaefer, the Law Librarian of Congress, to make some remarks. Thank you, Dean, and other distinguished guests. I'm delighted to uh, be celebrating with you today at the inauguration of the Harper Lee Prize for Legal Fiction. And I will note that today is kind of situated between two other important events that have happened close in time. One was the celebration last week of Constitution Day. And Saturday, in addition to kicking off the Library of Congress's 11th National Book Festival, we will also be kicking off the annual Banned Books Week. And as many of you know, To Kill a Mockingbird has had a high place on the honor roll of Banned Books for many, many years. I'm here representing the Library of Congress, but I think I'm actually representing libraries in general. When all the honors are given and all the book tours are over, although I guess for some, none of, they never stop. Yeah, we hope not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Books, along with other intellectual treasures, come to libraries to live long and rewarding lives and to offer explanations of the past and inspiration for the future. They sit on shelves today, either physical or virtual, alongside works in other media and by other writers whose ideas may support or challenge the ideas in these fanta fantastic knowledge capsules. And these collections of knowledge challenge us to consider and study myriad subjects, looking at 
topics of class, color, codes, legal or social codes, communication, and even our clothing as young scout in To Kill a Mockingbird often protests what women have to wear. Books of fact or fiction or those somewhere in between ask us to look at ourselves and our society every day. And many may even ask, are we killing the mockingbirds at the very same time that they try to entertain and educate us? Our libraries, personal, public, or even congressional, are constant reminders to our children, our judges, our lawmakers, our fellow citizens, and even our adversaries of our cultural values and of the legacies that we want to be remembered by. This afternoon, we are honoring two great authors, Harper Lee and John Grisham. They can be assured that as long as we have libraries, their work will continue to be honored. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberta. Uh, looking around this room, we could recognize so many special guests today. I know we have members of the federal judiciary. You honor us with your presence. But I do want to single out, and I'm sure Mr. Grisham will do it later on. We have many representatives from a Random House, Sonny Mehta, Gina Centrello, and the rest of John's publishing team. And we want to recognize you with a round of applause as well. We had an outstanding committee that selected this book. We had so many uh, books nominated. Uh, we had a group in Tuscaloosa and elsewhere that narrowed the field down to three books, and then we had an outstanding uh, selection committee. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, David Baldacci, to my right, whom, of course, is a best-selling author. His first novel, Absolute Power, was published in 1996, was an immediate bestseller. He has since published more than 20 novels and seven original screenplays with his wife, Michelle. Uh, is known for their uh, philanthropic work with the Wish You Well Foundation promoting adult literacy, and he received his JD from the University of Virginia. Then to my left, and my dear friend Morris Dees, uh, a graduate of the University of Alabama Law School, co-founder and still remains chief trial counsel for the Southern Poverty Law Center in Montgomery, uh, and probably of anyone else uh, in the state of Alabama single-handedly shut down the KKK uh, in Alabama. I uh, also want to recognize from the committee Mr. Robert Gray, a uh, graduate of uh, Washington and Lee Law School. He's worked with us on several projects. We're going to claim you as an honorary alum. Robert, of course, is a former president of the ABA and, and a partner in the prestigious firm of Hunton and Williams. Two members of the committee could not be with us. Uh, Jeff Tubin, who has worked with us on other things on our Morris D's Justice Award, CNN senior legal analyst and contributor to the New Yorker magazine. Uh, just a few days ago, we learned that Linda Fairstein couldn't be with us. Uh, she's also a best-selling crime novelist and former prosecutor. So let's recognize the selection committee. In a few minutes, uh, David Baldacci will lead a panel discussion of the book that we're honoring today, The Confession. So I want to take just a few minutes telling you about the author of The Confession, Mr. John Grisham, although I'm probably just repeating facts that all of you know. The more famous a person, I guess, the shorter the introduction. John Grisham, who's originally from Arkansas, graduated from the University of Mississippi Law School in 1981 and practiced law for nearly a decade, specializing in criminal defense and personal injury litigation. He also served in the Mississippi House of Representatives from 1983 until 1990. As difficult as all of us lawyers know it is to practice law, he somehow wrote every morning before the crack of dawn and published A Time to Kill in 1988. His next book, The Firm, spent 47 weeks on the New York Times bestsellers list and was a best-selling novel, the best-selling novel of 1991. Two more of his books immediately claimed the number one spot on that list, The Pelican Brief and The Client. Mr. Grisham has written about one legal fiction book a year. Nine have been turned into movies, and he's also written about other diverse subjects, such as baseball, an aging football quarterback, and Christmas. Mr. Grisham's nonfiction book, The Innocent Man, symbolizes, and as I understand it, galvanized his commitment to the goal of exonerating the wrongly convicted. 
and he is much involved today active